up guys? Hey, my name is Jason Dames. I'm with Final Start Fitness. Hey, we got a special guest on our program today, Mr. Michael Ferran. Um, anyways, hey, Michael has been di recently diagnosed a little under six months ago with type one diabetes. And he's, we, we wanna talk about on this broadcast a little bit about how he's been able to manage his type one diabetes, tell a little about his story and then how everything kind of transpired. So I'm really excited to have you on today, Michael. Thank you so much. Always, I, thanks for having it's me. It's going to be a really good show. I think a lot of you guys will really learn a lot, um, whether you're type 1 or type 2 diabetics or whether you're not diabetic at all. Some of the things that I think you'll learn will really be able to help you on your overall health and fitness journey. Um, so Michael, why don't we go ahead and just talk a little bit about, you can tell us a little bit about who you are, kind of how this whole thing transpired, and then we're also going to get into kind of the nitty gritty too as well. So. <laughs> Uh, tell us a little bit about who All you are, right. man. Uh, I'm Michael Ferran. I'm a uh, I'm a senior at Liberty Christian Academy in Wright City, Missouri. I uh, I love sports, friends, God, and I have type one diabetes. And he likes girls too. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Very true. Uh, no. Uh, so uh, you just want me to start with? Yeah, I mean. Um, so he he basically he got diagnosed with type type one diabetes a little over six months ago like we shared. Um, so he's he's very athletic. He's a young guy. This is a this is a very traumatic news. Um, so why don't you just uh, for a, especially for a young guy because it's going to change a lot of how, his lifestyle factors of what he can and can't eat. And so you know this is really really neat. But tell us a little bit about like where you were at and how this all transpired. Um, when you were diagnosed. Why don't you t step back there and talk about that story? So I've always been a little bit of a heftier kid whole life. Um, and then sophomore to junior year of high school, when I started to really go through puberty, I started to lose some weight, get taller, skinnier. And then very into my junior year, I thinned out a lot, started to put on some muscle. And I was like, yes, finally, <laughs> coming a man. So boom. Yeah, right. I went on a I went on a trip to New York City with some friends from school and I just didn't feel right the whole trip. And then while we were down there, I uh I got dared to eat a whole chocolate like parfait or cake that was like mousse and it was super rich for ten dollars. So, you know You did it of course. Yeah, mom mama didn't raise no chump, so I <laughs> ate it, you know. I got ten bucks. Oh my god. So, and praise the Lord, that is not what caused my type one diabetes. That's the first thing I asked in the hospital. <laughs> I was like, I ate a cake, did this cause it? And they were like, no, oh, ew. so such a relief in that moment. So I started to, uh, that night after I ate it, I got really sick and puked really bad. And I was like, I felt great afterwards for like the next like, 36 hours, it was like amazing. I felt um, great again, I threw up, I was like finally I just cleaned out my system, I feel great. And then the bus ride home, the 26 or 27 hours that it took on uh, this giant bus, I had to pee like every 45 minutes. I didn't know why, I couldn't sleep, I kept waking up and it was like, excuse me, can you lean your seat up? I need to use the bathroom. And it was just over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And I didn't even realize it. Like I knew that's a symptom of diabetes. I just, you know, farthest thing from my mind. You know, you never think something like that's gonna happen to you. Right. So I got home. I threw up the second the bus got back to, to our school. And then over the next two days, I started to puke like, eight to 12 times a day just throughout. And every time I puked, it would be two or three times just. Oh my gosh. And it was, it wasn't like normal throw up. It was just terrible. It was so acidic. I, I hated it. I felt terrible and water didn't taste good for some reason. I don't mm. know why I didn't want to drink water. The only thing that satisfied my thirst was chocolate milk. I don't know why, but. <laughs> I don't know if it's because New York water was so terrible, but that was the only thing I wanted to have. I didn't want to eat anything. Mm. Nothing tasted good, and I still couldn't poop. So, <laughs> right? So you were constipated. Too. Right? It was like, yeah, it was like six days of constipation. I thought that was what was causing the throw up. So finally, one morning, I woke up, was on the phone, about to go do something with my family, 
And I just threw up right then and there. It was like seven-ish. And I was like, Dad, I don't feel good. You care if I stay home? He's like, yeah, go to sleep. I'll wake you up when I get back from work in like two-ish mm -hmm. hours from this appointment. And then we'll go do what me and you were going to do. So I go to sleep. And then when I open my eyes, it's like 5.30 p.m. I slept the whole day away. <laughs> and I was like, I got up. I started to feel a little bit better, a little more energized. And then like 10 minutes went by and I puked. And then it was like, dang it. So I went upstairs and I was like, mom, I think we need to go to the hospital. This doesn't feel right. So we went to the emergency room. Uh, we were in there, uh, found out that I had lost 27 pounds. It was super weird. A uh, few hours went He's by. He's already skinny anyway, so that he probably looked like a <laughs> Right, <laughs> right. A few hours went by and then a, uh, a nurse came in and like, I didn't think she knew the protocol, but she was like, yeah, um, you're not leaving tonight. Your son has diabetes. You know, it was like, it's, it's all out of whack. Mm. You know, it's off the charts. And my mom's like, he doesn't have it. You know, you, you lost your mind. That's the wrong kid. So she like left in like a frantic state, like oh my God. all weirded out. So another doctor comes in and he's like, we can't officially tell you, but we know he does have it. We're going to send him to Cardinal Glennon and you're going to spend the next few days there. So I took an ambulance to Cardinal Glennon all while like, can this really be true? You know, do I really have mm. it? Was it the cake? <laughs> yeah, right. right. Oh man, that ate, ate away at me. <laughs> so bad. So I, I went there and then over the next five to six days that I spent at the hospital, you know, uh, day in and day out, they really tried the conventional side of medicine. They really conveyed what they thought to be the best way to manage it, you know? And at the time I, you know, I didn't know how to manage type 1 diabetes. Yeah, right, right. So, you know, anything they'll give to you, you know, yeah. you'll take. So, yeah. well, maybe, was... maybe like take a step back and just maybe explain a little bit about what type 1 diabetes is. Cause maybe some of you guys may be unfamiliar with what that is. Uh, maybe you are a type 1 diabetic that's listening to this. Like, uh, this might be common for you, but why don't you just kind of explain just the brief synopsis of it? So, type 1 diabetes is a severe autoimmune disease and, uh, Autoimmune diseases are all the same throughout in the same general sense that your body attacks itself through its immune system. And what occurs is, is it, they'll name it after like, so diabetes is after the pancreas, mm -hmm. you know, arthritis is after joints. Mm -hmm. um, just Hashimoto's is thyroid. Yeah, yeah, right. You know, celiacs is, you know, your uh, islets of Langerin don't process the gluten. the gluten coming through. So... With that, uh, your body sees a certain thing or a certain area as a threat and it will attack it and it just mm -hmm. does it until it a, kills it or it severely damages it. Mm -hmm. So with diabetes, it's within your pancreas, your insulin production gets either completely removed or just is not existent at mm -hmm. all because your body, your leukocytes, your white blood cells just can't stop attacking it. Mm -hmm. And so without any insulin production, you can't process carbohydrates, which then causes mm -hmm. no energy, multitude of side effects, and mm -hmm. what caused me to find out that I had it. Yeah. And all insulin is, is it's, the, the easiest way to describe it is it's literally the key to the red blood cell. Mm. You know, you eat, if I eat, if I eat a cheeseburger from McDonald's, my body is going to give me insulin and it's going to open my red blood cells and it's going to put all those carbs that it turns into sugar inside of it mm -hmm. and I'm going to I'm going to keep going. Yeah. So with diabetes there is none of that and the sugar just scratches over your blood mm -hmm. until you keep peeing it out and then when you can't process it through your kidneys anymore it mm -hmm. affects the rest of your body yeah. and leads to Yeah, and we talk about this all the time at Final Star Fitness. Guys, um cuz you know, insulin resistance, uh, type one diabetes is where your pancreas isn't really producing insulin, okay? So insulin, like he said, is the key to allow the glucose or sugar into the cells to get used for energy. Um, so if, if insulin isn't present, then the sugar, the carbohydrates aren't getting into the cell, getting converted into the energy that it needs to be, which is ATP. Um, now, type, type one diabetes is where you're, pancreas isn't making it, type 2 diabetes is more of an insulin resistant problem where right. you have insulin present in the body, but the cells are actually rejecting that signal or the key. The key isn't really opening up the door and allowing the glucose to get in. So what happens is you have the conversion of this, 
these sugar molecules into triglycerides and it's a stored form of fat. And so maybe you're just wondering what the difference, what's the difference in that, but this doesn't relate to just type one or type two diabetics. Right. I mean, this is a severe problem throughout our, you know, Life. throughout America and throughout the, the whole world. We have so many, so much food present all the time. We're eating 24 <laughs> hours a day, practically. We, we used to not have refrigerators. There used to be times where you wouldn't go without eating for long periods of time. Intermittent, intermittent fasting has become popular over the past year yeah. or so. And it's really just, that's a state that people were naturally in for majority of civilization. Now we have refrigeration and we have processed packaged carbohydrates, it's commercially, yeah. soda, high amounts of sugar, just, just constantly flooding or flooding us. And so a lot of people are in this place where they are, are insulin resistant and they're on their way to becoming type two diabetics or, or whatnot. And so if you want to be able to manage your weight and so forth, um, blood sugar is highly inflammatory and it causes the shift in your metabolism to primarily only use glucose for energy and it can't burn fat very well. A lot of us, it's not that like fat, you know, makes you fat or, you know, you might be concerned about that. It's your inability to burn fat. Right, right. And so I just want to make that distinction because it's a, it's a problem that we're facing in America and this is why intermittent fasting and some of the ketogenic approaches are really uh, helping people in a significant way. So you had type, you're, you're type one diabetic, you're, you're in the hospital, they've told you, they diagnosed you with this. Um, okay, so now let's kind of transition and move forward a little bit there. What are, your, what are you thinking and how is this, you know, some of the advice that you're giving? So first thing I'm thinking is like, man, how is this gonna affect every aspect of my life? Cause that's what they, that's what they sh like had to explain and tell to you, it's like, you know, you, you're always gonna be a type one diabetic. You're never not, you know, it's, what's done is done. How are you gonna react to it, mm -hmm. you know? So then they started implementing and teaching me every day, all hours throughout about it. It was, you know, this does this, this does this, your body processes this, this way, this is bad, this is good, and all carbs are the same. Every way, shape, or form, complex, not good, bad, you know, mm -hmm. you're gonna dose, you're gonna dose, you're gonna eat, you're gonna eat. A uh, great thing that they showed to me that I still use today is if I dose for something, I'm eating it. You know, you don't wanna have insulin in your body with the lack of carbohydrates. Mm. So you get real good at making sure, you know, you never wanna make, you never want to have your eyes bigger than your belly. Yeah. So, and I <laughs> think a lot person. of us, right? fall succumb to that you know because mm -hmm. then we get into like overeating and we make it such of a recreational activity mm -hmm. when it's you know not so i really I, w I would love for you to make a distinction there too is and we're not we're not slamming conventional medicine there's right, a time right. and a place for this right. right but i remember you telling me like man pretty much the advice i got was hey you can pretty much eat anything that you want <laughs> right. just dose for it and right. when we say dose it just means he has to shoot give himself insulin because his pancreas isn't making it so yeah uh they they told my parents i was too far along in my way of life and that they didn't want me to feel different. They said they didn't want me to get depressed because a lot of people that get an autoimmune disease later on in life do. So mm -hmm. they w pulled my parents aside and they're like, if he wants Pop-Tarts, give him Pop-Tarts. If he wants this, give him this, you know? And uh, one day my mom was reading the, uh, the ketogenic Bible. It was like our third day in there. And my nutritionist came in and she was like, get that thing out of here. That does not, that's, you're not using this in this man's life. She's like, look at what he's in now because I was entering DKA, which is diabetic ketoacidosis, which is a bad thing because your body gets way too acidic mm -hmm. from the not being able to process anything. That's a good point. Well, uh, I wanted him to elaborate on that because a lot of times people here have heard ketoacidosis and they think that that's a, uh, it is a bad, uh, it's a bad state, but it's normally prevalent only in type one diabetics that do not have insulin present in the body. Right. So like the difference between ke nutritional ketosis is that you have uh, blood ketones that are in a normal range and um, it's, it's offering a, a secondary sub fuel substrate for the body. Um, but ketoacidosis is when the insulin isn't present and the body starts rapidly making ketones right. and the, the blood gets very, very acidic and that could be very, very prob problematic and even 
death threatening, right? Right. So she was, the, the, the best way she conveyed it to my parents was like, I don't wanna say the like shock and awe, fear factor, mm -hmm. but she was like, look at him now. You, do you really wanna do something like this that it's doing the same thing? She's like, this diet is horrible. People don't need this diet. They're killing themselves and they just don't know it. So essentially she thought that if you eat a ketogenic diet, you're gonna be in ketoacidosis. Yeah, always. She was like, you're really gonna mess up this man's life. And you know, my mom, praise God, she's a stubborn lady that you know wants to find the truth. <laughs> That's so, the truth. <laughs> so she really was like, no. We love you, Wendy. So we went like, I did probably a good, I would say almost a month and a half of trying to live their lifestyle, the mm -hmm. one they conveyed, which works for some people. I'm not, I'm not against it, but you know, with the price of insulin and how it always keeps going up and up, I never wanted to be classified as mm -hmm. insulin dependent. Even though I am as a type one, I never wanted to have to, you know, be stuck to it. Cause you know, what if I grow up and I can't afford it? You know, mm -hmm. I, you have to think long term yeah. about your life. So and explain how you were talking about offline earlier too, also about the possibilities of all other autoimmune problems. Yeah, and you know, autoimmune diseases are so. It's it's called the umbrella effect. So you know, type one diabetics, I have like a sixty percent chance in my lifetime of getting celiac disease. I don't mm -hmm. want celiac mm -hmm. disease. You know, if I want to dose randomly and have like a a, a cheat meal, you know, with family or something, I want to be able to have bread. Mm -hmm. You know, otherwise, what's the point of a cheat meal? You know, mm -hmm. so I tried to go, I tried to live the live the lifestyle they told me to live. Mm -hmm. You know, I was trying everything and I wasn't seeing results. My blood sugar was way too high and it was way too low. Mm -hmm. I wasn't experiencing that many highs, but when I were, they were high. And then just lows upon lows upon lows. You know, an average blood sugar rate is, you know, like a hundred. Mm -hmm. I was experiencing like either like 40 to 60 Jeez. or like 185 to 220. You Jeez, know, and that's I, like a huge difference. Right, and oh I, I, I didn't want that in my yeah. life. So I, after you know, they conveyed, you know, you're supposed to be dosing like five times a day, you always want insulin in your system. You never want your body to basically forget that insulin is because then when you try to implement it at a later mm -hmm. point or date without it being in your system, your body can really not like it or it can overuse it or mm -hmm. underuse it. So they always want that constantly, your body processing it. Mm. So I was listening to what they were saying and I was seeing good in some areas and the area was I could eat whatever I wanted and I, when I was hungry, you know? <laughs> so, so you tried that for a little bit. Right, so I, I did that for about a month and a half and then after I was all over the place, they kept changing my dosage rating, when they wanted me to check, how long they wanted me to wait. Every, they were trying to figure out my medium and we just couldn't. And they recommended, didn't you say, like to dose like five times per day? Uh, so I had to do at least four. Okay. And they just always insinuated having a fifth, but I for sure had to check five times a day. So, and I still follow that rule. I think everyone should check their blood sugar. It's a great, mm. it's a great way to listen to your body quickly and see what's occurring. Oh my gosh. So I was, I wasn't seeing any results and I kept hearing that the honeymoon phase, which is the easiest part of a diabetic's life, I wasn't seeing that at all. I was seeing nothing, nothing even close to that. You know, they say, you know, uh, when a diabetic's in the honeymoon phase for the first, you know, six months to a year and a half, two years of being diagnosed, it's supposed to be your body still has hidden insulin it's trying to use. Mm. So you'll like never be dosing. You'll always have good blood sugars. Just eat whatever you want, stuff like that. And I was getting none of those benefits. I'm like, man, who told me this? Oh my gosh. So I looked for another alternative. You know, if if you never want to keep going down the same road if you know if it's going to be a dead end. So, <laughs> so I I tried going to a functional medicine doctor, Dr. Jake Rowland of Winchester Spine and Sport, and he's really been trying to implement. Uh, her name is uh, Jody Stanislaw. She's a diabetic whole life, and she's on no insulin, and mm. she she actually really conveys the ketogenic lifestyle, and she's doing a lot of uh, research. You got a book. Uh, 
Uh, I believe she has a book. I know she does podcasts and stuff okay. like that. With uh, she's doing it with like the University of like Boston and stuff. Oh my gosh, I'll have to follow her. She, she's done this like eight to ten year study mm -hmm. about the ketogenic diet and diabetics, especially type ones, because the research there is way less conclusive than type twos. Oh my gosh. And the ketogenic diet just works with so many areas. You know, I wanted to do more research and figure out more about my body. So the more and more I looked into the keto diet after I tried it and got on mm -hmm. it and saw some good, fast, thorough results, I found out that people use it for seizure control, you know, yeah. epilepsy, like people use stuff like that and really they make it to where their life is healthier, happier, and mm. easier all just by, you know, not eating sugar 24 seven. Yeah. And you know, I, I mean, there is willpower that has to be involved. I, you know, I'm not Discipline, saying that there's yeah. not, but when you create that habit, it becomes your lifestyle and then you live an exponentially longer life. And man, Michael's speaking so, so many things that like, he's, he's a man after my own heart right here because <laughs> he's, he's talking about creating habits. He's talking about thinking about where you want to be at in the future. Um, and you know, discipline and that, that's something I talk about all the time. I mean, Hey, everything that you do at any type of diet that you do is going to take discipline. Right? right. And so like a lot of times I have people talking about, wasn't well, the keto diet really restrictive? Isn't that so hard? And I'm thinking <sighs> in my mind, well, yeah, I guess in a sense, everything has restrictions. I mean, right. there, whatever <laughs> I did, I did the typical bodybuilding approach where I was eating eight times a day and I ate a, a ton of carbohydrates and a ton of protein and stuff, but I still had to be restrictive, right? I can't, couldn't just eat whatever I wanted. Right. And, but, but I found with the ketogenic diet, it really suppressed my blood sugar a lot more because I was utilizing ketones right. for energy more. It kept me, kept me satiated, kept me calmer. I wasn't, I didn't have that cranky, hangry feeling all the time, like I was gonna punch somebody. Right. Like we were at this, I gotta tell this story real quick, but we were, you could tell his blood sugar was low. We were at vacation um, a few months back, and man, you're like, you could tell like Michael just needed to eat something and you know, he had a dose. I mean, he, he looked like he had that hangry feeling like he was gonna punch the waitress. <laughs> he really was, I'm just joking, give him a hard time. Yeah, it's, so I started the functional medicine approach. You know, I wasn't seeing any good results with this. It was all over the place. And I was like, well, at least the keto diet says this mm -hmm. and these results will follow if you stick to it, you know? So I was like, okay. So I went in, I got some blood work done. I saw that, you know, I could get celiacs. You know, uh, they say that I probably got diabetes because I'm A, a strep carrier, and B, I got mono. And that mm. is what they consider to be my trigger. They never know for sure, mm. but that's what they think insinuated my autoimmune disease and most people's are their triggers. Mm. And the biggest one is the Western diet, but you know, people never look at that aspect. No. So Just eat whatever you want, go for it. <laughs> right. So I really, uh, I tried it and my A1C, which is how acidic my blood was before the DKA was an 11.2. And it's only supposed to go down if you are consistently regulating your blood sugar and that's with insulin. Uh, half to one per every like month and a half to two months. Mm -hmm. So I started the keto diet keto diet and I did it for about one and a half to two months. And then when I went back to Dr. Jake and we did another, another test of blood work, that time I got my A1C checked. So I'd only been out of the hospital for like three ish months mm -hmm. from getting my diagnosis. And when I got back, it was that, that day did suck though. When I got my blood work tested, cause they did a lot and you felt drained, but I was mm -hmm. like, you know, I want to see the results. So five or six days go by, I go back and get it checked. And my A1C is a 7.1, which is like ridiculously crazier because people's, they want theirs to be at a 6.6 .6 or 6.7. Mm -hmm. And I'm at a 7.1 mm -hmm. from an 11.2. So I was like, man, I'm actually seeing results. It's working. I'm feeling happier, healthier. I was uh, getting way more muscle mass and keeping that like little baby fat off. Mm. And you know, so I that's was. That's another big benefit of the ketogenic diet. I hate, sorry to interrupt. No, go you, right ahead. Man, ketones are, are muscle sparing, similar to the way carbohydrates are. So that's another huge benefit that right. of why you might want to look at this approach for overall health, health reasons. Muscle is 
uh, very good at regulating your blood sugar too. So if you're a, a, a type two diabetic, if you're if you're insulin resistant, like muscle is one of the best things that you can do for your body. And here you're able to maintain lean muscle mass while losing body fat at the same time, which is a really, really great benefit. So that's right. awesome. And the ladies probably like it too. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I know I keep going there. Right, right, right. So, <laughs> so, so, uh, I, you know, uh, I finally saw the results that I wanted to see after doing it for about two months. And I was like, okay, this is it. Cause I was still in all honesty undecided, mm -hmm. you know, the first two weeks of the keto diet, it was like, mom, you know, I'll just do this cause you want me to, you know, but like I was fine with eating and dosing, you know, sometimes there was, you know, the whole reason we switched, the biggest factor was she said I wasn't eating enough. I wasn't me, you know? Mm -hmm. So she's like, let's try something to where you can feel like you again. So I was a little hesitant. I, I got into it. The second blood work comes back. I see that the results that I wanted are there. You know, I'm not gonna, you know, get gangrene or lose my eyesight or something right. or get, get really bad teeth or, you know, fingernails and toenails. So I was like, I was seeing the results. And then that really just turned into, okay, now this is real. This mm -hmm. is what I want to do. So I, I, I fully dove into it. I went gluten-free, dairy-free. You know, I, uh, I really restricted my drinking of diet soda to only when I had cheat meals. Um, and I really implemented the whole trying to use just fat and protein just all the time mm -hmm. for sports, for rec like the recreational side. The yeah, talk a little bit about that with the sports, how you actually manage that. Because, you know, I know you strategically use some carbohydrates in there, right? Is that right, correct? Yeah. So the way the, the way my actual doctors conveyed it, they said, you know, carb load. And so I tried that a few times and then I would be like, 60 afterwards mm -hmm. it was like I, I would carb load but it was always they always said it was never enough mm -hmm. or you know so i would go back to just drinking juice boxes getting a lot of apple juice in my system raising my blood sugar really quickly so then dr jake was like no that just sounds so off to me he's like let's try maybe you eating a lot of protein and fat that day and then right before eating some like mct pill mm. oil you know, tablets with like maybe a little mm. healthy protein bar, you know? Okay. So I do that and then my blood sugar would just stabilize. Stable. It would I would feel great. <clears throat> I feel I feel like sharper, they said, you know, when your blood sugar gets super high, you don't even realize it, but your body is at like a numbness. It's dull. Mm. You can't think as clearly, you don't process anything as fast, your reflexes can slow down. And then I start to go full keto and I just feel like a better person you know i actually was like man i see what diets are made for you know, <laughs> you know after i l lived my life the other way and the whole reason i went keto because you know there's south beach atkins paleo daniel fast there's all these other diets that you know mm -hmm. could get me good results i just liked the whole just even though i miss potatoes <laughs> all honesty i miss them i miss them you know French fries. Right. <laughs> That's the the only time I'm ever led to cheat is, and it's not like a pre-planned, like, oh, tomorrow we're going to be doing this, you know, eating at Red Lobster, I'm going to cheat. It's uh -huh. like, oh, I just smell French fries. <laughs> and it's always a mental battle. You know, we got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I just loved the no restrictions on meat, mm -hmm. eating as much meat as you wanted. You know, mm -hmm. I probably got sick of beef jerky, you know, yeah. <laughs> just eating, eating meat, you know, and I, I, even though so, at some, some meals or sometimes I wouldn't feel full, mm -hmm. I still knew I was getting the nutrition mm -hmm. I needed and the satisfaction of, mm -hmm. of, of the diet instead of sitting down for 10 minutes and like, okay, let's. Alcohol wipe, take. <laughs> right. you know, I got I got tired of that. And then what started to stink is is I had less and less places to dose. Mm. That's that's what comes with the whole picking and choosing your battles. Mm. Was, you know, as a diabetic, you know, you only want to dose where there's high fat. 
because you a don't feel it as much and it doesn't bleed or mm. anything like that well as i went more and more keto friendly and more and more keto lifestyle i had less and less fat on my body yeah so it was it like worse, huh? it, yeah <laughs> oh, yeah it was less and less but those meals like you know if i go to golden corral or something and i dose and it hurts for 30 seconds I know that A, I'm doing something right because it hurts to dose and B, that this dosing is worth it because I haven't had over 65 units of insulin over the last four days. Mm -hmm. So right now at my point in my diabetes walk, I'm at where I want to get tested for remission, which basically means you pause it. So mm. I, I go back to see Dr. Jake and get the blood work done. And I think, oh, over the next month, right after New Year's, where they basically see if the, my uh, leukocytes, my white blood cells have stopped attacking my pancreas. Because even though now they know I have diabetes, my white blood cells are still gonna always attack my pancreas mm. in that one area. Mm -hmm. So what remission is, is it basically means your body got so healthy and so feeling back to itself again, the way we were intended mm -hmm. to be, that it stops. It like, it actually prevents it. Mm. So basically you're curing an autoimmune disease by lifestyle and diet. Mm. Even though you can never be classified as cured, you are living it. Cause remission, you have to keep mm -hmm. it. You know, I can't go into right. remission and yeah. be like, we start eating whatever I want again. <laughs> exactly. You know, French fries. It'll come back. So, yeah. <laughs> right. So, but what he's saying is he can he can basically manage it and get the your his body operating like it should and managing it correctly. You, with that said, right, obviously right. you don't go back to the same old lifestyle. <laughs> right. 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 The same problems. You know. <laughs> right. But I I truly believe I think my that's a good point that to just hone in on is I really really believe this for the most part. I, Bar outside, there's you know some ge genetic predispositions that you know some people have true genetic problems that are incurable, you know, and that's probably a very very small percentage. But I really believe if we give our bodies the right like environment, Michael, that it can heal itself, that it can right. it wants to operate like it should, and that's why I always talk about the five lifestyle factors that you all might get sick of me saying, but you know I talk about nutrition, your exercise, sleep stress and, and your toxic burden that, that's on your body, you know? Those are lifestyle factor, factors that are trigger, triggering certain responses, even genetically in the body. And I know I mentioned this offline to Michael, that's another benefit of the ketones that uh, the ketones are offering is they're acting as epigenetic signaling molecules. Right. They're what's called uh, histone deacetylase inhibitors. And what that does is it, it's actually like a, a, a switch and it's turning off bad genes and it's turning on good genes. And so when you turn on the good genes, your body upregulates good positive adaptations that the body needs to be able to operate properly, right? Um, when you turn on bad genes, the opposite happens. You have, you're more predisposed to cancer and autoimmune right. problems and right. all kinds of different things. And, and so I know that was kind of like a, a sidetrack thing, but these ketones are really doing a lot of good things in sparing muscle like we talked about earlier. Right. And so now you're at a place where you're actually, so you went from almost dosing five day, times a, a day to yes, where, yes. how many times a day are you doing now? I have to still do one. Okay. And the only reason I do is, in all honesty, I've, I've told Dr. Jake this, three times since getting diagnosed, I haven't taken insulin during a day, which I'm not supposed to, <laughs> but I, uh, so I have a, you know, Shoot. I have the reminder on my phone that, you know, like, oh, nighttime Lantus, which is basically what everyone's pancreas naturally does. It's actually the main reason people have pumps. Mm. It administers a little bit. Your body like feeds off of it throughout the day. Cause in the sense of a diabetic, my blood sugar naturally gets mm. higher without me doing anything. Mm. I don't know as the exact means as to why that occurs, but the farther and farther I get along in my diabetes, if I would live the way that I was, I don't want to say supposed to, but presented, mm -hmm. I would, my, as I got older, my diet, like farther and farther from honeymoon phase, mm -hmm. it would just raise for no reason. So the main reason of a pump is to just administer insulin slowly. Well, I believe the reason why that might be, and this is maybe a good, just, something to think about, but the conventional uh, advice that he was giving is just, hey, eat whatever you want, just dose for it, 
And for the most part, uh, like let's just take type two diabetics. Right. Type two diabetics is where they're more insulin resistant. So it's not really a problem that their pancreas is still making insulin. And so the, if you're if you're adding more and more carbohydrates and just eating whatever you want, and the cells are already insulin resistant, they're going to become keep co- becoming more and more insulin resistant. It's kind of like a somebody that's drinking alcohol that needs to keep drinking more and more to get drunk, right? Right. They, they, so it's the similar way. You, you're going to need more and more insulin um, because there's you're, you're becoming more insulin resistant. So it means that means that you're not getting near as much insulin or sugar into the blood cells. So the body has to make more and more insulin. And so it's, it's this vicious cycle. And so that's kind of like in a type type two diabetics. But in his case, if you're pump, if you're constantly having to dose and you're dosing more and more, that dosage is going to have to increase because those cells are becoming insulin resistant. There's inflammation. And we know this right now, as far as I, I act like I come up with it, but um, scientific literature, it's called immunometabolism. But what they've really found is that when we have high amounts of inflammation, it shifts our body over to this glucose or sugar metabolism. Right. And we're not really able to burn fat properly. And so that's kind of like really what's happening. It's why we all should be aware of the type of food that we're eating and the amount of sugar that we're constantly putting in our body and why we should be intermittent, you know, utilizing intermittent fasting and some of these ketogenic approaches. Um, and, and so that's just kind of a side ta- tangent, but so you were at five, you're down to about one. And now Dr. Jake is saying that hopefully after your blood work, you can pretty much manage it completely without insulin. Right. right. The only reason I'm still taking it now is a safety precaution, not even in the sense of that, just to make sure that I don't get a high blood sugar one day and not know why. And it mm. could be because I'm not taking my, my long acting insulin. So I started getting out of the hospital at 29 units of long acting mm-hmm. insulin. And now I, I take two each night. Mm-hmm. And that's a big difference because it uh, long acting crystallizes under your skin mm-hmm. and that really hurts. So 29 units of it was a, that was a fight every night. Oh it was God. a real, it was a real like, I had to pump up myself to be like, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> And I was doing oh it, I was doing it in my butt cheeks too, because oh. that's the fattest place on my body. Yeah. And so that was the least hurting place. And that's just such a, you know, mental mm-hmm. hype you know, up moment. You know what? I like what you were saying earlier too, is that you, you made a decision and you just said, man, I don't want to continue in this. And so you made, you know, made changes. Like here's something I see a lot of times with weight loss or whatever it is. It's like, um, <sighs> people are just okay with, they, they don't think very much ahead. And that, like most people just take that conventional advice and are like, man, I'm just gonna dose, keep dosing for it. And they don't really like make any real changes, right? Right. You have to, I always talk about this all the time, but you always have to have some motivating reason why. I think me, me and Michael think very similar, but he was just like, man, I don't wanna continue this the rest of my life. Um, but I know of people that do have type one diabetes and they, they've just dosed for it and they continue to have to dose all the time and they're checking their blood sugar every like 15 minutes you know just to make sure yeah it's what kind of lifestyle would that be right right? you know and and so i'm always promoting to people i'm i promote this to you and i want you guys to think about this and hopefully this is just an encouragement but man think about where you want to be in your health 15 like 20 30 years down the road like if you continue in that same lifestyle where will you be at and what I do know, and I teach this all the time, is that your habits are going to create your results, the little habits that you make. Right. And so if you continually have bad habits over the next 10, 15, 20 years, what situation are you going to be in? So start making good habits now so you don't wait till something bad happens right. for that to happen, right? And that's where most people end up is something bad happens and then they, they have and the then force. They react. Right. Yeah, they're forced to react. And you know sometimes people make good changes like you but sometimes they don't, they just continue in their like bad habits. Yeah, I've, uh, I've had uh, three instances now since I've gone keto of running into people in public and I dose and they tell me, you know, hey, I'm a type one diabetic and they'll be like 70 and they've had it since they were six years old. And they'll tell me about how far medicine has come just in their lifetime in that sense, especially. 
And I'm like, man, I admire you guys for your courage. Uh, so impressed. And then, you know, it gets into what their A1C was, you know, like, it's, it's kind of weird, but like, we talk about stuff like that, like, oh, you know, how many times were you dosing? And like, I heard from one guy that they had to, uh, uh, what did they have to do? They had to uh, uh, prick, uh, like, like prick their blood and drop it in a, a cup of water and capsule it. And if it turned like yellow, they were under 200. If it turned blue, they were over 300. And that depended on what they ate. No way. Like, oh my just gosh. a bunch of weird stuff like that. And I've never heard of that. I talked to this one diabetic actually at uh, Panda when I was dosing this night after we had the super long day and I had no chance of eating something at the house that night. It was like already midnight. So I dosed in for only the orange chicken because I also had the regular like chicken with it, which it was delicious. Mm -hmm. And they asked me, oh, like, what's your story? And I got to talking to them for a few minutes. It was this man and his mom, and he was probably in his 50s. Mm -hmm. And I told him that I was going to get tested for remission. And his mom swore up and down that I was a type 2. She just couldn't believe that I was, mm -hmm. you know, doing no insulin. Mm -hmm. And then I showed her my booklet, and I was telling her, like, no, ma'am. And I got into the aspect of how they're looking at the medicine, how they're looking at autoimmune diseases now is not a, mm -hmm. not a, you know, death sentence, but uh, just a restriction. Mm -hmm. And now with the functional medicine side, you're looking at it as how do I go around these restrictions yeah. and still live a happy, healthy life? Yeah. And I think we need to do that with everything, you know? I think you're right. It's all, yeah. It's, and well, and I think, you know, I want to make this point too, and that's why I'm such a big fan of functional medicine or integrative medicine. It's, it's the idea of that, all of our body is, they're, they're all, it's all interconnected, right? So one part of the body affects the other. And, you know, again, not to bash conventional medicine. Oh, There's a time yeah, and place yeah. for it, especially for emergencies. But I would say for the most part, they're, they're typically treating it like symptomatic and treating symptoms, like putting a Band-Aid. And we've heard, all right. heard this approach, the Band-Aid approach. But um, the idea of functional medicine is that they, we want to get to the root cause. And so... A lot of times you'll see certain numbers, whether it's cholesterol, and so you got high cholesterol and they're looking at just those numbers alone. And so they give you a, a drug or a statin to bring those LDL cholesterol down without really ever addressing why is the LDL cholesterol high in the first place, right? Right. And so I always like to use an analogy that people can use. There's lots of different analogies you could, but one in particular is like, can you imagine a car that's blowing out black smoke out of the muffler and you're like, man, we need to, we need to put this bandaid on it and fix it. And so you put a filter onto the pipe and now it blows out white air, right? So you're like, oh great, we fixed it. Well, no, you really didn't fix it, right? Cause th there's right. still a problem in the engine and now the engine's gonna blow up over time, right? That's essentially what's happening. And a lot of them with the medications, it causes other symptomatic problems like diarrhea or whatever. So now we gotta, we gotta give you another me medication to help the diarrhea. And now that medication has side effects. And so it's this trickle effect. And a lot of you guys have family members that are probably on this, on this cycle, yeah. right? And so functional medicine is, is, I believe, one of the, you know, the idea that we can, our body does want to heal itself. We got to give it the right environment and the right things so it can do. And Michael's a great testimony of this, of wanting to be able to do things right. And so maybe this might give some of you hope out there that are on medications and, and not to say to, to go get off everything that you're on, whatever, like talk to your doctor. Um, but, you know, work with a, a, a good doctor like Michael's doing, like a good functional medicine doctor. And if you're in the Troy, Missouri area, you know, maybe you might want to hit up Dr. Jake um, and so forth. But um, this is a, a great, great point. So why don't we kind of uh, tail in and wrap this up? You know, like um, you, you've definitely improved your quality of life. Oh, without since, a doubt. Since starting. Yeah, I would. Like when I think about the way I was living, you know, sleeping, you know, f four to five hours maybe on school nights and then, you know, during the summer sleeping like 15 to 16, you know, and uh -huh. eating whatever I wanted, doing whatever I wanted. And then I look at my life now and how ener I, w I was always an energetic person, but now I actually feel the energy yeah. too. I don't use any like any source of caffeine. I, I don't feel like I'm a, like not addicted, but reliant on anything. Man. Besides just, you know, 
sleep really is the main factor that we need to really yeah. focus on, which I still struggle with a lot. You know, you always think, especially like, being a young dude, you're, right? like, you're always like, man, why is there only 24 hours in a day? This is terrible. <laughs> you know, so it's when I hang out with my friends all the time. <laughs> right, right. So I really, it's, it's just that I see the results and you know, you want other people to mm. like, I have a friend who is a type one diabetic and he's had it since the second grade. And I knew him prior to my diagnosis, three ish years and seventh grade, he got celiacs and mm. I see the way he manages his autoimmune disease now. And I was like, man, I don't want that lifestyle for me. And then after I saw my results, I want him to get on it. He's a little resistant, but I'm yeah. slowly trying to work it into him because, you know, I don't think there's a problem with conventional medicine. I think what the problem is, is they're unsure still in some areas. We mm. haven't fully figured everything out and they don't like how that unsureness is making them unsure. So they lie and fully wipe the slate clean of the functional mm. medicine standpoint. Because the functional medicine yeah. standpoint says the only thing that needs to be unsure is, mm -hmm. you know, you. Mm -hmm. If you're unsure, you let you and your body yeah. figure it out through any form of a certain diet, a certain, you know, exercise, sleep schedule, mm -hmm. you know, listening. The only unsureness that is wrong is you now. You right. know, how do we fix that unsureness without yeah. the whole medication 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 yeah and i i do think there's in the conventional world i do think there's some people that you know maybe are intentionally you know misleading people but for the most part i really believe that like you know i know and have listened to a lot of different mds they're just not taught right nutrition it's in, it's in their exactly. school you know and in the residency and so forth and you know some of it's just like just unawareness and and whatnot and a lot of times people the people in the functional medicine field they're just they really have a heart to really get at the root cause and really fix the problem for long long term and right. you know i think we could go down that trail for a long time but it's great to see you having such success with this michael i mean i think this can give so much hope um you know maybe we'll try to do like a revisit the next you know few months to see kind of where michael is at and if you have questions feel free to put them down in the show notes below we would love to be able to uh, answer reply to them maybe michael can reply to some of them um and maybe we can do a video that's specifically on some of those questions as well um but man I, man i really appreciate you being on the show always, I, there's always. probably a lot more we could talk about <laughs> about it yeah. um you know, I, I kind of wanted to touch on how he, he actually manages that, some, some of the different things that he does, some of the places he goes, you know, out to eat, um, because I know that could maybe uh, present some challenges. Um, but maybe we'll save that for another video. But man, hey, I really appreciate it. If you guys like our channel, hey, please feel free to comment, put, uh, hit the like button, make sure you put the notifications button on so that way you get some more of this great content. Um, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but I just think I, we want to put some great content information out that will help and benefit you guys along your health journey. Maybe put some things out there that you think you would like to, us to put out and hear from. Um, with that said, guys, we're going to peace out of here. God bless. Let's do a big mic drop. What do you say? Okay. Mic drop. Boom. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> See you guys. Thank peace. You. Boom.